Hey everyone, my name is Renee and welcome or welcome back to my channel created by Renee. I am finally back with a new video on paper mache techniques. I'm here today to share with you some techniques I've been putting together in a monster of a video that's taking, it seems like forever to complete and edit and all that good stuff. This video is packed with tips and techniques demonstrated across five different original paper mache vases created by me. Grab yourself some snacks, a drink, because you want to watch this one all the way through so you don't miss any of the tips and techniques I've scattered throughout. Stick around and you'll learn how to create your very own collection of paper mache vases that can actually hold water. You interested? Let's do it. If you haven't already guessed, we're starting out with a thing that will actually make these paper mache vases waterproof. Plastic jugs. If you don't have anything like this on hand that you can recycle, you can always make a trip to your nearest big box store and pick up something like these giant plastic banks. Let's remove the lids because we won't be using those to make the vases. Actually, they do make very good paint palettes, so let's save them for later. While I'm personally not a huge warehouse club shopper, I know people who are and I get them to save me these big giant jars. These are perfect for what we're going to do because they are heavyweight plastic, they're shatterproof, and they're very sturdy. Now this is not a required step, but I remove the labels from mine because these jars are large and you will be able to see inside of them. I'm going to be demonstrating five different paper mache vases in this video, showing you techniques based off of the two biggest paper mache methods, the paper strip method and the paper pulp method. This is vase number one. I'm starting out with an empty cardboard tape roll. To make the handles, I cut the tape roll in half and then I cut that piece in half long ways to make a skinny enough piece for a handle. There are a lot of other items you can actually use to make handles. I've used wire, uh, other types of cardboard. I just like this because it's already round and easy to work with. Now you get to play around and decide where you want the handles to be and how you want them to be positioned. They can be vertical or horizontal, but for this piece, I'm going with vertical. I'm gonna use my glue gun to attach this piece to the jar. And you can also do one handle, two handles, three handles, however many handles you like. Hey, knock yourself out. Do some with multiple handles like these Etruscan vases from the island of Crete. Now I've got my handles attached the way I want them, I'm going to go ahead and cover them with masking tape. The reason I do this is because they are cardboard and if I don't cover them, then once they are hit with the heavy wet pulp, they will start to buckle. The masking tape is enough to seal them and protect them from dissolving or falling apart once you apply the pulp. At this point, you can sort of play around, have fun with the shape of the handles if you want to alter that anymore before you get started. Okay, let's get vase number two rolling. For this vase, the canister that I'm using actually has a well. So I'm going to take advantage of that well to add weight to this vase so that it's nice and weighted at the bottom. To do that, I'm going to add pulp and some Mexican beach stones to create some weight. Once I've filled that little area up, I'm going to cover it with pulp and make sure it's completely covered and set it aside so that it can dry. This is why I do more than one piece at a time because there are drying phases, painting phases, curing phases. You get the idea. Back to vase number one. Now I'm going to start adding pulp to this piece. I'm starting out where the cardboard handles connect to the plastic container. If you haven't yet watched my video on how to make paper mache pulp, I will link it in the description below. My recipe is very simple. It's three ingredients with no boiling involved. So I recommend watching it before you get started with this video. Also, don't be like me. Make sure you make enough pulp for your project before you get started so you don't have to stop and make more to be able to finish your project. So as you can see, I'm layering pulp over the entire vase. I'm taking my time and adding it on bit by bit so that it doesn't fall off from the weight of the pulp. Because if you add too much, you clump it on too fast, it's just going to fall right back off. Take your time. And as you're adding, blend the pulp together like you see me doing here. I'm leaving the handles for last to give the rest of the vase a chance to start drying so it's all very strong. On to vase number three. You ready? For this vase, I decided to tape the neck of the plastic jar so that the threading on the jar is not as apparent. I'm going to layer paper over that, but I just wanted to help facilitate covering that threading. I don't want to see it when I finish paper macheing it. 
here's my glue and water mixture if you're not familiar with that um you can check out my other videos on paper mache uh, on the pulp process and on the strip making method which talks about my paper mache slip but to put it simply paper mache slip is something that i kind of made up based on a ceramic slip um, where it's just clay and water mixture that is used to smooth the clay well same thing with this this is uh, glue and water that's used to help smooth the paper mache so and it's the same type of mixture that you use to dip paper strips into when you're making when you're doing the traditional paper strip method to get a nice hard non-flexible sturdy surface i recommend at least five to seven layers and once it's dried you can determine whether you want to add more to make the piece harder and now back to vase number two the little weighted area with the pulp and the stones in it is drying nicely so we can go ahead and start covering the whole surface of the, the canister with pulp. I want to note that for this type of application, a uh, drier pulp that has a lower water content and a higher paper and glue content is ideal because it's going to stick to the form you're applying it to better and easier. So keep that in mind. Let's check back in on vase number one, which is drying nicely. And something that I do that might seem counterintuitive is as the piece starts drying so that I can get the smoothness that I like, I spritz it with water to continue to smooth it. I've started adding the pulp to the handles. I did it on the insides first and allowed them to dry a little. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the outsides of the handles. I take my time with um, layering over cardboard things like this even when I've added tape to them because I just don't want want to deal with them collapsing on me now I'm using my slip mixture again to smooth everything together as I was filming this video I realized the need for a sort of turntable situation and I started out using my kitchen turntable but I didn't want to mess that up so I ordered an actual sculpting wheel I didn't get it till I started editing this video but I did want to share it and I've used it since I received it and it's amazing I'll be using my new sculpting wheel for everything like this going forward. And I'll post a link in the description directly to the sculpting wheel and to my supply list on my Amazon affiliate store. As you can see, I'm continuing to use my slip mixture and my water spray bottle to smooth my vase. If you're like me and you use paper from a shredder to make your pulp, you will run across the occasional piece of plastic. That comes with those plastic windowed envelopes. You can remove it if it bugs you. Let's check back in on vase number two. It's been drying and it's not fully dry. As you can tell by how heavy it is, you can see that it's heavy by the way it's moving. Um, but I just start adding more pulp to it because I'm gonna cover the entire vase eventually, but I do it bit by bit so that pulp doesn't start falling back off of the piece because that can be pretty frustrating. As you're smoothing and sculpting, the pulp can and may shift around some so you can see the plastic jar underneath there, but it's okay. You can smooth it back into place pretty easily. This one's almost there. And now vase number four. Did you forget we were doing five of these? Yeah, we're doing five because I got a lot of tips to show you. Freeze. Don't do this step. I did it, but afterwards I realized it wasn't really necessary that I could have left the jar solid. It didn't need to be a deep vase. I did it so I could layer this on top and make a deeper vase, but it's not necessary because who has a yard long stem that they want to put in their vase? So don't don't bother with that. Just leave it solid if you're stacking two pieces like this. So uh, then I went on to use my hot glue gun to connect the two and to top it off, I used some extra strength duct tape to put them together. Now here's a quick sketch of what I'm trying to do with this vase, but that's just the beginning. Let's go back and revisit our old friend vase number one. It's mostly dry at this point. It's dry to the touch and I'm just doing some final smoothing and making sure things are as smooth as I like them to be. But this is also a great phase at which to apply texture like I'm doing here. There's different ways you can do that, but this is one. Right, so while the other ones are drying and doing their magic, let's go back to vase number four. And to seal or cover this connection and get some mass onto the vase to sort of get it going in the direction I want shape-wise, I'm gonna start by adding a just a layer of 
paper pulp that will just be underneath the final layer of pulp. If you notice, it's kind of chunky and there's stuff still visible in it because it's not going to be seen. So I didn't really do a lot of kneading for this pulp. Vase number five, the final vase, is going to be using two different shapes connected together to create a taller piece like vase number four. But luckily, since we had that trial and error, we know not to cut the bottom of this top piece and we're just going to glue them together with a hot glue gun. Now I'm um, going ahead and applying the pulp to cover that connection and make the vase more like the shape I want it to be. For anyone who's wondering what that is I'm using under my pieces, this is just a dollar store pizza pan covered in plastic bags. Back to vase number three. I did several layers of newspaper finishing up with a few layers of brown packing paper just for the appearance. With the bottom now covered, I can just wait for this piece to dry. And voila, here she is. If I were to do this piece over, I would do a brown layer inside so that the newspaper wouldn't be visible. But overall, I like how this turned out. And we're back to vase number one for a few final steps before painting. The vase now is pretty dry. Um, you can see that it's several different shades of gray and that's because we layered, um, we've layered paper pulp on in a few different sessions so they dried a little bit different in color but that's not a big deal um, because nine times out of ten we're going to paint this. Um, I did notice a little tiny crack in the handle and that's not because the paper mache cracked when it you know after it dried it's because I didn't get it sealed all the way as it was drying so if that bothers you you can go back like I did and use a little mixture of really mushy pulp with water and glue to make it really soft just to patch up that little place. Other than that, the vase is now pretty hard and I'm going to go ahead and add cover the bottom so that it's completely covered in pulp and ready to paint. I'm trying to remember all the tips that I want to share with you about this process, but I am positive I'm going to forget something, something about the techniques that I wanted to mention. So please drop me questions and comments um, in the comments below and I'm, I'm happy to answer questions or go into more detail if there's anything that I wasn't clear on here because I know I'm going to forget something. You just know. Now, it doesn't matter that the um, pulp on the rest of the jar is mostly dry. You're going to smooth it and blend it the same way you would as if, if it were all still wet overall. Just smooth it and blend it until you're happy with how it looks. Vase number two is finally dry enough for us to flip it over and finish the top. And um, just a note about drying times, it, sometimes these things can take days or weeks to dry. Um, I actually use in my studio a couple different methods. I use a heat gun and I use a uh, drying rack that I built um, with a fan at the top of it. And you can also use a microwave if you don't have something like plastic, like these pieces incorporated into it. I'm now adding some girth because I wanna create a certain shape to the outside of this face that has nothing to do with the actual covering the jar. I want it to have a shape. So I'm adding more pulp over the dried pulp to create that shape. If you've been paying attention, you know what time it is. Time to start smoothing. My favorite tool in the beginning is the palm of my hand or the butt of my hand because you can use your hand to just get a big area smoothed and shaped pretty quickly. And again, I'm spritzing with a water bottle to help me smooth this piece out. Real quick, if you are getting anything out of this video, if you are enjoying it, if you're just getting some sheer entertainment from watching me make a mess, please go ahead and hit the like button. Also, there's going to be more messes like this. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button for notifications while you're at it so you can catch them all. Paper pulp is not clay. Don't get me wrong, but I love how it sort of takes on the consistency of clay the more you work with it. Okay, now it's time for a tip on surfaces, smoothing and adding details. If you can see this, at this point, the pulp is very soft and pliable and clay-like. It's easy to smooth it. It's still pretty damp. This is a paintbrush and I'm gonna demonstrate how it takes details at this point, but if it, 
um, then being honest, I'm going to tell you to sort of wait until it's a little bit drier because if you look closely, you can see the water raising up as I'm pressing the brush handle into it. And those details, you're just going to have to go back over them. Whereas if you wait till it's drier, like it is here, and you can see the surface is drier, it's giving a little, but it's there's not water raising up out of it as I'm pushing on it. This surface, as opposed to the surface I just showed you, is going to hold those details way better. You may still have to go back over them, but in this instance, when I did this at this phase, I did not have to redo these marks. I just did them one time, which was great because I did a lot of them. Here's another example of a pattern you can create. This is just an old Sculpey tool that I got back in like the 90s. Um, they sold it in the section with the Sculpey clay, which I have used from time to time. Uh, but they the tool the Sculpey tool works great with paper mache pulp as well. Here I'm doing some more markings. I just used a couple of different size paint brushes to get different size markings. And here again with the Sculpey tool, and that's about it. This one's coming to a completion. Okay, let's get back to vase number four. Uh, there's a bit of an update. Um, here's the finished um, sort of ceiling layer. And I'm starting to apply the shaping layer, which is like the top layer that's going to go over the whole vase to make it the shape that I want. It. I sort of want it like a, col a curved column shape. Um, if you are familiar with ancient architecture, there's a term called intasis and that refers to the curvature of Greek columns that that would give them a certain look from a distance from say the ocean that um, is was strictly for aesthetic reasons so that being said blah 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 um, I'm now the update is I'm now decided to add another vase to another piece to the bottom of this to make it even taller I did not cut this bottom because I learned my lesson, but I did cut the rip, the neck off of this vase that I'm adding to the bottom so that it would sit flush on top. I hot glued that together and now you can see three pieces stacked together to create one tall piece. And now I'm also adding a cardboard handle the way I did on vase number one. But for this vase, I'm just gonna do one because I'm envisioning a picture. If you remember the sketch that I showed, I'm just doing like a very tall picture and this is how I'm gonna assemble that. If you haven't already guessed, I'm a little bit of an art history nerd, but that's where I get a lot of my inspiration, so hey. Now I'm just making sure that the handle is securely glued in place before I go on. So now the connecting layer on base number five is pretty much dry and you can see where these two plastic jugs are connected here. I'm going to go ahead and use my glue and water mixture and brown paper to cover the whole base. Uh, there's no specific reason for the gloves except that I was multitasking when I was filming this and so I needed to be able to rip those gloves off and uh, go back to some other project I was working on. So for this step I just covered the entire shape with the brown paper. I did I think three layers. Just layer this on, make sure the plastic is covered, and I smooth the paper as I went, but it doesn't have to be perfect. There is going to be one final step that's going to cover this, so don't worry about making this perfect. Once that layer of brown paper is dried, I can do the sort of embellishing. That would involve adding rope to the surface of the vase in a certain pattern. I had rope, but I was planning on using that for another project, so I decided to make some rope from some old t-shirts, and I will upload a short to show how to do that, because this video is getting kind of long. <laughs> Now I'm using my hot glue again to attach the homemade rope <laughs> to my paper mache vase. And I'm just going to start by making a lip for my vase. And I'm going to glue that and cut that off short so that it just makes one solid lip. And then I'm going to go on to create a design around the rest of the vase with the homemade rope. 
Just a note about the supplies and tools used in this video, I will try to add everything that's available through Amazon to my Amazon affiliate store, my list, so you can um, click the links provided in the description below to find everything that's available there. So now I'm satisfied with the pattern that I've created. This piece is ready to cover with a final couple of layers of brown paper. Let's finish up the pulp phase for vase number four. Remember, we're adding masking tape to the handle to cover the cardboard so that it doesn't buckle when we add the pulp. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and cover that with paper pulp and continue on to cover the entire vase with paper pulp. Time to paint vase number two. I love the way it looks now that it's dry. It has a rustic artifact look to it and I'm excited to get it painted. I'm using this ivory colored craft paint. I believe it's from Apple Barrel and I'm just gonna dry brush it, meaning I'm not dipping the brush in any water and I'm only using a little bit of paint at a time to sort of dry brush it and give it a distressed look overall. I do this over the entire vase. Um, I just keep adding more until I'm satisfied with how it looks. And if I add too much in one place, I can go back with my water spray bottle and spritz right on there. And it, um, I dab it and it actually kind of helps the rustic look. And there you have it. Vase number two is finally finished. Let's move on to vase number one. Vase number one also has a beautiful rustic effect to it. It, it could totally stand on its own without being painted. It just has a, a great look to it. Maybe even almost stone. But for my purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a beautiful green. This one is called English Ivy Green. It is a craft acrylic from Apple Barrel. And here we have our unique paint palettes that we saved from earlier. And I'm just gonna do the same with this one. I'm gonna do a dry brushing, no water. I'm just gonna start adding light brushing on paint. You know what I mean? And um, just go all over the vase and keep adding and layering it until I'm happy with how it looks. I want it to look rustic. I don't want it to look like something from Ikea. <laughs> Sorry, Ikea. Um, and then after I get this covered, then I'm gonna go back in with a metallic gold to finish it off. Just in spots, just to give it a little highlighting here and there, and it's done. Now let's move on and get back to vase number three. We're gonna use a craft paint that's in the color caramel. I think it's, I think this is one called Anita's Craft or something like that from Hobby Lobby. Um, I think it's their like store brand paint, but it's the color is caramel and I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush the caramel all over vase number three and just give it a nice distressed finish. I don't want a solid, smooth caramel color. I just, I want it to be rustic and distressed looking. Now that I like the way that looks, I'm going to go in with a light, fine sandpaper and sand it because I want to give it a smooth finish. And if I like, I can go back and add a little bit more paint once I've sanded it. Now I'm ready to add the final layers of brown paper to vase number five. I hot glued these cotton ropes that I created onto it in, in most places, but I, I left it unglued in some places so I could shift the strings around to make them look the way I wanted to before I started adding the paper. You can use rope or wire or all kinds of things to create designs on the surface of your piece. And you don't have to do lines like I did. You can do swirls or do shapes of animals, any kind of thing you feel like doing. Um, it just whatever you like. 
be sure to cover the entire piece, cover all of the rope or whatever you use to create your design. The more paper you add over your embellishment, the smoother the final piece will be. All the connections on base number four are now covered. The handle connections, all the co connections of the plastic jars are now covered and I can finally finish covering the entire piece. So all I'm doing is the same technique I used on the other pulp vases, just layering pulp, layering pulp onto the plastic jars and making sure it's covered. And then once they're all covered, once it's all covered, I go back and smooth the entire thing. Smooth as you go, but then you still got to go back and smooth the entire thing for a nice finished appearance. If you're still watching this far, bless you, my child. Let me know by putting a vase emoji into the comments. And let me know if you have any comments or questions or different ways you would do this. Because I'm here to learn from you too. <laughs> I've added my spout and I'm not going to show you the rest of the smoothing because you're now a master at it so you know what it is. Let's paint vase number five. Okay so again it's just going to be dry brushing. I'm not going to I'm going to keep it really simple and um, I'm going to add some other embellishments at the end but I'm gonna dry brush this color. It is Heather Gray, another one from Anita's Acrylics. I think that's um, that Hobby Lobby brand. And I'm just gonna dry brush that on, make sure I get around all my little rope embellishments that I added earlier and cover the entire piece. Vase number four is dry and ready to paint, finally. Let's take a look inside so you can see what I meant about the cutting it wasn't necessary to cut that because it's just going to be a super deep vase for no reason you're going to need like tree limbs to to be able to fill up this vase anyway let me know which of these vases is your favorite design I can't decide I go back and forth I love um well I can't decide you tell me which one is your favorite is it reveal time let me tell you I love a reveal so let's get on with it here are the five vases finally finished. I'm very happy with how they turned out, but let me know what you think. Which one is your favorite? Are you gonna try to make any of these? And if so, which one? If you've watched to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate you and I hope you got something out of it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit the bell button for notifications. See you next time. By creating an imaginary picture.